What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out Alexa Bliss. Life is in danger. WWE brand split ends potentially, and another WWE star injured. And in other wrestling news, man. Now, I have been seeing some wild stuff on Twitter regarding Alexa Bliss. We're gonna get into this. Appreciate all the love and support on the channel, and uh, we're almost at 90k. You know, and let's keep it going. Thank you guys for everyone that's newly subscribed and everyone that's been subscribed. Thank you guys so much. Let's keep this going. See what has to be said. I can't hear anything on my end because I do this every time. For Y'all probably heard it, but I didn't hear it because my audio wasn't set up. Am I going to keep this in the video? Probably so. Back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the... What is going on, guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with Adler, some more news. Uh, Join us now working. as we look at the wildest <laughs> news stories and rumors you need to know, including Alexa Bliss's life in danger, uh, yeah, this, WWE has ended the brand situation. split, NXT superstar injured, Kurt Angle undergoes major surgery, a former WWE Money in the Bank winner retires, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling now videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive already. lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. And now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Now our first story looks at Alexa Bliss's life in danger. A topic of news today is a disturbing story concerning a so-called fan threatening to shoot WWE superstar Alexa Bliss and her husband Ryan Cabrera. The alleged threats were made on Bliss's Instagram account after she posted a notice about an upcoming charity event. The account posted a number of rambling messages including some of the following, Alexa Bliss, so you can't stop me there. What are you going to do, put a restraining order on me? That's not going to work, because you can't do that sweetheart. Nice try though. I'm still going to talk to your ex Matt, you can't stop me to talk to him, hell he has a better woman than you and you can't stop that. They wrote another message, plus for your information I took my daughter Bliss stuff including that dumbass doll of yours, I burned everything of your merchandise, my daughter doesn't know and you can't stop that, so I should have sent you the video. Hahaha. <laughs> While Alexa eventually responded saying, I do have something to say, I saw the DM you sent to people saying you were going to shoot me and my husband yourself, those screenshots have been turned in. Now hopefully this situation will be taken seriously as the 2020 home invasion of WWE superstar Sonya Deville showed that stalkers are not to be taken lightly. The individual who has repeatedly stalked and harassed wrestlers at the WWE Performance Center is another example of how these individuals often slip through the cracks despite restraining orders and arrests. I mean some fans just really take wrestling too far don't they? Next Bro, up WWE ends- what the hell was that? I, I know I saw the some of the tweets on Twitter. I just didn't know the context of what was why this dude was doing that. Granted, you don't need to know the context. Something wrong with people. The fact that that dude has a child is wild to me. Some people are mentally not there. You're going around DMing people saying you're going to hurt someone. You're going to try to shoot someone. But you're supposed to be a fan. Bro, people like that. That's how things get taken to the extreme when they're not taken care of. When people think they can say and do whatever they want and nothing's going to happen to them. I hope somebody looks into that because that's a that's a cyber threat and you're you're constantly making it. Granted, some people say stuff over the online just to troll you. And that could possibly be a situation. But even then, bro, that's still people need to pay attention to that. Authorities need to at least pay attention to that because that's some people really take this stuff a little bit too far. Some wrestling fans don't understand the difference between real life and what happens on television. These are real people with real emotions, real feelings. Sometimes we get too invested into the storylines and start doing weird stuff. Hell, even for us on YouTube, sometimes we have to draw the line when people be trying to call us on Instagram or I remember one dude was able to find my actual phone number. I don't even know how. I didn't have none of my information online. He was texting me. I'm like, yo, bro, chill. Like sometimes some people do too much. So hopefully they they look into that because, you know, that that's just there's a lot of weird fans, wrestling fans out there for sure, man. That shit's not cool. The brand split? A more rumors and speculation that the WWE brand split is done. Of course, if fans had a dollar for every time they heard yeah. the WWE was discontinuing its separate this? rosters, they'd have enough money to buy front row seats for WrestleMania. 
Actually, no, that shit is expensive. However, <laughs> recent booking has figure four online's Brian Alvarez thinking the WWE brand split is all but finished. Alvarez discussed the situation on Wrestling Observer Radio saying, This isn't anything official, but the brand extension is essentially done. Half of the Raw crew is going to be on SmackDown Friday. Cody's going to be there, I think Seth is going to be there, Edge doing whatever and it makes for a better show as we mentioned a thousand times. Mm -hmm. That's worth mentioning that while some of the Raw stars are scheduled to appear on Smackdown, there's no word that they'll be wrestling on Smackdown. Yeah. The WWE has been using stars from opposing brands in dark matches so we'll have to wait and see who shows up. The brand split seems to be on shaky ground as seen by the WWE's decision to not only unify its WWE and Universal Championship mm -hmm. but the Raw and Smackdown Tag Team Championships. While this doesn't mean that the brand split is over, as WWE's Unified World Championship and Unified Tag Team Championships before, it does open the door for more appearances between SmackDown and Raw stars on opposite shows. At the same time, fans have also heard how the USA Network and Fox don't want their shows being marginalized by booking on the other brands. This For example, true. USA executives reportedly lost their minds last year when the WWE booked a Hell in a Cell match on SmackDown between Reigns and Rey Mysterio, rumor having it led to the WWE booking a Hell in a Cell match on Raw yeah. just to appease USA Network executives. Yep. USA and Fox executives have that. also complained in the past about one show having more main eventers than the other. Interestingly, some fans have observed that while SmackDown has the undisputed world champion and now the tag team champions, Raw seems to have more talent on its roster. This is how the it WWE seems. has never let the brand split get in the way of stars from one show popping up on the other. Whether it was the NXT invasion or the WWE wildcard rule, a rule that no one has yet to figure out, superstars have worked into brand rivalries besides the traditional Survivor Series competitions. While both Raw and SmackDown have enough wrestlers to sustain separate brands, although SmackDown is operating with a skeleton crew, this having is wrestlers very true. make occasional crossovers seem like a good way to pop ratings and make USA and Fox executives happy. What do you guys think though? Is WWE better without a brand split? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, there are, uh, I think someone had uh, talked about it yesterday on Twitter that they are not going ahead with the brand split, but they're going to have people float between both shows per storyline reasons. And when they merged the division, well, not merged the division, when they unified the titles, unified, <laughs> when they unified the titles, this was going to have to happen. Granted, Roman hasn't really been on Raw like that. His storylines... I think the, the RK Bro, they brought the storyline over to SmackDown. So they're gonna, that's kind of what they're doing. And that's what they were kind of doing before the brands, uh, the, before WrestleMania 38 this year. They just, certain storylines cross shows. Does the brand split need to be a thing? Honestly, it kind of does. I was one of those people for the longest that was okay with, you know, wanting, uh, wanting the brand split to end. But as I really look back on it, they have too many people, especially in the men's division. It's not going to work. You know, you need the brand split so that way wrestlers can get some opportunities. Granted, they still don't get the opportunities, you know, the ones that they're supposedly trying to build up. But it helps. If you have everybody on one brand, people are just going to be sitting in, back, in the back and catering, you know, more than it is now. So they do need the brand split. But at some point they're gonna they're most likely gonna separate the titles because you know this is not gonna work. Obviously, um, this is gonna be a short term situation because having Roman have both the belts, he's not going to both shows. You know what I'm saying? He's only in one storyline as of right now, and whatever storyline he's gonna be in is gonna be with whatever superstar that potentially is on that show, unless they're able to you know situations like Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble you know, getting title opportunities that way could possibly, you know, lead to someone from Raw coming over to SmackDown to face Roman for the title. So, no, they're not splitting up the brand. They're not doing a brand split. The networks are not even going to let that happen. They have separate contracts with the networks, so that can't happen. What's going to probably happen is what they said on Twitter, most likely, and what he was saying. It's just have people, certain storylines will be able to cross over to different brands. That's about it. Which they've been doing anyway, so. Next up, an NXT superstar injured. Now, That's bad news for rising star Nikita Lyons as she was forced out of NXT 2.0's uh -oh. NXT break. I know a lot of y'all be lusting over her. 
a lot of y'all be lusting over her, man. Yeah, that's all I hear. Nikita Lions, oh, she's mommy. I'm like, yo. Workout tournament due to what is being described as a freak injury suffered in training. Lions, who was scheduled to wrestle Fallon Henry in their tournament semi-finals round, bowed out with wrestler Tiffany Stratton talking away into the match. There's no word on Lions' condition, but we will continue monitoring the situation. Oh, I know y'all. Lions has received considerable kudos from her fans for her work in the ring, and the 22-year-old looks to have a promising future ahead. Oh yeah, I, I bet that she's getting a lot of love for her work in the ring. <laughs> Next up, a deleted segment on Raw. Uh -oh. If you're wondering where Mustafa Ali was on this week's edition of Raw, well, Fightful Select recently noted that a segment involving Ali and Austin Theory didn't make the cut due to timing issues. Mm. The Patreon account also mentioned that the WWE plans on continuing the current program between Ali and The Miz. A program between The Miz and Mustafa could be good for Ali, especially if the WWE presents him as a true challenge to the WWE's A-lister, both in the ring and on the microphone. We will see. Next up, Kurt Angle undergoes major surgery. There's good and bad news concerning WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle. The bad news is that Angle underwent major surgery to fix both knees, but the Jeez. good news is that the surgery went well and true to his nature, the Olympic gold medalist is ready for what's next. The Hall of Famer recently updated fans on his recent operation, Damn. tweeting, Thank you for all your prayers and best wishes for my two knee replacement surgeries today. So far, so good. I realize rehab is going to be oh, a bitch, yeah. but I'm ready for it. If I won a gold medal with a broken freaking neck, I can handle this. It's true. Thank you all. Angle's knee replacement surgery comes as no surprise as the 13-time world champion has put his body through the ring oh, of both during has. his Olympic wrestling run and his time in the WWE, New Japan, AAA, and TNA Wrestling. Yeah. But wrestling News' Andrew Ravens provided some details on wrestling's Olympic heroes' plans. Angle had been planning since at least Gosh. last month to get both of his knees replaced. He said that he wanted to get it over with and will be in a wheelchair or on a walker while he rehabs. We're sending out our thoughts and prayers oh, to Kurt yeah. Angle for a fast and full recovery. Yo, I mean, bro, one knee replacement is something very serious. Two of them bad boys? That means he's been dealing with this for a very long time, bro. Kurt Angle, bro, the dude literally was putting his body on the line wherever he wrestled at. That's, that's insanity. Two of your kneecaps, knees being replaced because they've been through all types of hell just to entertain us. That's Kurt Angle, another one of uh, a legendary wrestler, one of the goats in the business. You know, despite the stuff he's dealt with, he always, he always was trying to put on a great show for the people, man. All you can do is respect it, man. Wishing you a speedy recovery, my guy. Next up, a WWE star getting a new gimmick. Uh -oh. Is Imperium member Fabian Aikner being repackaged with a new name and gimmick? Well, that's the question being posed after a vignette aired on NXT. Paul Davis of Wrestling News is reporting, the vignette included a video shot in Venice, Italy, and shots of a well-dressed man with a focus on his fashion sense. His face was never shown, so it's supposed to be a mystery, but there's a lot of speculation that this is actually a former NXT Tag Team Champion. Davis went on to say that Fabian Aikner, who's been seen in many weeks since Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser moved up to the main roster, is the person who is likely being repackaged as Giovanni Vinci. Aikner was born in Italy and there's been talk of dropping mm. the Imperium aspects of his gimmick. Damn. Our fans hoping for an Imperium reunion on SmackDown may be disappointed, yeah. but if Aikner is getting a new gimmick, it means that WWE is still interested in utilizing him rather than wishing him well on his future endeavors. I mean, I, I would have preferred him in 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 Imperium because it it kind of just makes Walter's overall appearance. He got two guys with him that had that same type of serious, all about business vibe. I think that works, especially in building up a new star who already has like some form of a a a team behind him. I think that could have been cool. Yeah, having one person behind you is you know that's cool, but it, it'd be different if. Walter's trying to go for uh, a, a main championship, and then he has his his people with him trying to go for the tag team championships. It kind of gives it adds another potential tag team to the division. But hey, I don't know anything. And finally, a former WWE Money in the Bank winner retires. And last but not least, it looks like 73-year-old Ric Flair is the only wrestler planning on working their last match. 39-year-old Aaron Stevens, wow. aka former WWE superstar Damian Sandow, broke the sad news via Instagram. 
This match against Trevor Murdoch at Always Ready, my swan song as it were, not only marks the finale of an unparalleled wrestling career, but the dawn of a new age. When I first left wrestling, the business experienced one of the biggest lulls in its history. As Stevens, perhaps best known for his role as The Miz's stunt double, worked in the WWE on two separate occasions before his 2016 release. Mm -hmm. Stevens is clearly having fun with his last match as he closed out his message by saying, Since returning, my presence has not only proven a blessing to fans everywhere, but the entire industry has been better off because I was a part of it. <laughs> After June 11th, I will keep the wrestling fans, all staff, the competitors, and the entire industry in my thoughts and prayers going forward <laughs> as it will proceed without me. Thank you. But there you have it, folks. The wildest news stories and rumors. And the thing with Damian Sandow, he got over when he wasn't supposed to get over. It's always the guys that get over that Vince and the people in the back don't expect to get over. And when they get over, Vince and them, they be like, how? And it's like, damn near, they punish them for it. How dare you get over? Same thing with Zack Ryder. He got over on YouTube. Push me, Vince. He got over on YouTube, and they were just like, "How? How is this a thing?" I don't know, man. It, I, I wishing the best for him and whatever he does after wrestling. But you know, they definitely. I will say, and I think a lot of us can agree. Maybe he wasn't maybe the ring general that some would have wanted, but he was charismatic. He was an interesting, funny character that a lot of people were kind of starting to get behind, and they they. He kind of cut that quickly, man. So, but yeah, man, this 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 whole video was quite interesting. Comment down below and let me know what other videos you guys potentially want me to check out. I'll try to check them out for you guys. And uh, appreciate all the love and support on the channel, man. You guys have been fantastic. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all in the next one. Peace.